11 and Garden Fork Radio. You're here with Rick and Eric. Good morning. Good, good morning, Eric. How are you, my friend? I'm good. It's a little sticky here. It's a little sticky here. It's going to be <laughs> sticky everywhere for a while. I read that um, Washington, D.C. is where it is because it's in a tropical zone. I hadn't read that. Uh, I knew it was kind of a malarial swamp. Uh, <laughs> You know, um, Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson, referred to uh, this uh, Norfolk area where I am in Virginia as a malarial swamp. And uh, people here are always complaining about the mosquitoes. And I say, well, you know, whose fault is it? Uh, we moved into a malarial swamp. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's amazing, really, when you think about it. Um, at the time of Jefferson, uh, virtually every human being on the North American continent had one form of malaria or another. Uh, if Jefferson had malaria, um, below you, about um, Boston or so. Do you build up a resistance to it? It's like chicken pox? No, mostly they uh, they endured it, and there were ways of uh, trying to use some warm wood and different things. They thought they were trying to get rid of it. Uh, mostly we cured malaria in this nation by uh, massive public works projects to drain the land. That's, wow, that's how you cure malaria, and that's what you know the the big DDT push was back in the uh, in the forties uh, and fifties was to uh, end malaria in the United States. And I see now that it and a lot of other tropical diseases are kind of pushing back up from the uh, uh, the uh, Caribbean. So uh, it's kind of uh, kind of spooky, but uh, yeah, that's if you uh, we'll all be sleeping under mosquito nets pretty soon, I imagine. Huh. I'll have to watch. I didn't, you know, I didn't really, I just thought I'd bring up tropical zones and we learned all this information. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a, I'm a wealth of uh, useless information. Hey, everyone listening. How do our microphones sound? I'm curious. We've been tweaking the settings. Um, Rick has been doing a lot of research on this. Um, we're using a program called Audio Hijack Pro on Rick's end to record his end of the uh, recording. And you can play with some uh, really fun settings with that, like some compressor filters and stuff. So let us know how it all sounds. Very curious. Yeah, this is this is actually completely uncompressed right now. So just... Uh, it sounds... Well, it sounds good on my end. It's amazing what Skype will do. So... Yeah. <laughs> Who knew? Uh, well, I'm, I'm just glad to be able to do it. Uh, one of the things we're going to try this time is um, we're recording the channel separately. Uh, Eric on one channel, me on the other. And I'm going to email him my channel from my machine and he's going to combine them so that we don't have that uh, hollow skypey long distance sound you know, it'll be we're hoping more like a um, a real you know, podcast a real podcast <laughs> yeah like we're really there together like like someone that has money does it like <laughs> slate or npr or whatever oh. anyway Today we're going to talk about uh, how to become, how to be more creative and insightful, and um, a new iTunes review we had, and whatever else pops into our heads, which is typical of Garden Fork. Yeah. If you want to reach out to us, the email address is radio at gardenfork.tv. That's radio at gardenfork.tv. So okay, where'd you find this article? Uh, it was on the Washington Post. I got it from. Uh, didn't you post it on Twitter? Um, I post a lot of things. I don't remember. Maybe I did. <laughs> well, I thought I got it from you. Rick has a very interesting, uh, so just some neat sharing that he does on Twitter every day. Just, I'm not going to read every article that he puts up there, but some, some of them are pretty darn good, I think. So I read it. Well, thank you. Um, uh, I, I just I read voraciously um, all day long. And um, when things interest me, I share them uh, on Twitter and on Facebook. And um, then I also listen to a lot of podcasts, which I uh, share on uh, podcasts worth hearing. But I also um, uh, send those out on Twitter and Facebook and just try to spread the word and uh, let people uh, hear all the big ideas because there's a lot of great stuff going on out there. Yeah, I kind of lose track of it all. It's uh, information overload. Me too. In fact, uh, one of the things I'm kind of committing to doing uh, in the month of August is cutting way, way, way back on those things and uh, finishing up some uh, uh, projects that uh, actually deal with today's topic, which is um, do these eight things and you will be more creative and insightful, neuroscientists say. 
Yeah, this is, there's some very simple things we can all do to set the stage for insights, out of the box thinking, creativity, and the whispers of intuition. Okay. So, uh, and this is neuro- an article on July 6th by Bridget Schultz or Schulte in, um, in the Washington Post. And it's uh, in keeping with something Eric and I have been interested in a long time, which is uh, human potential. Yeah, I always feel like I'm, I'm I'm capable of so much more than what I do. Well, aren't we all? <laughs> so what is the first thing that we should do? Rick. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, the first thing I was going to talk about, because I'm always interested in the science behind this. Oh, okay, go ahead. And uh, this is actually neuroscientists looking at this. And they, two different neuroscientists looked at the same question from different aspects. One of them using EEG, electroencephalogram, um, which is just brain waves, and the other using functional MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. And they were trying to, they give people problems and, and let the same problem and let them solve them and see how intuition takes over, you know, that little flash of insight. And they find out people kind of divide up into two different groups. Uh, some tend to be more process oriented and uh, some seem to be more, uh, you know, waiting for that spark of, inf- um, of uh, insight to, uh, to happen. And so it, it, they were actually be able to see this. Uh, the e- EEG gives you uh, the actual timing so they can actually see very precisely when the brain waves switch on and off and, and whatnot. And the functional MRI uh, shows you the blood flow in the brain. And then it's not as precise in time. It lags a little bit. But you can kind of see what's happening in what different part of the area of the brain. And they have pretty much figured out what happens in each area of the brain so they can kind of intuit what's going on in each area. So the MRI allows them to kind of see where it's all happening. And I do, you know, like I do feel my brain kind of working harder when I come up with an idea about something and I get excited about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, but you know, sometimes though, isn't it amazing? And that a lot, we'll go into this in this article, but, uh, uh, it's when you're not doing anything that lots of times you get those flashes of intuition. I mean, this article kind of explains it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, so what can you do to, um, set the stage for insightful, uh, for insights, creativity to arise. And, uh, one of the things is, uh, they say here that, uh, insights like a cat, you can't order it to appear. You can <laughs> coax it, but you can't command it. And I think that's, uh, that's really important. Um, the harder you think about something, lots of times, the, uh, the more likely you are to get in your own way. Yeah, that's like where you have to go to a meeting and brainstorm. You well, know, like, I hate brainstorming meetings. Oh, yeah, that's going to work. Yeah. Sometimes it does. But I've actually come up with some interesting stuff in meetings like that because I just kind of think out of the box. And I'm like, well, what if we do this? You know, and people yeah. are like, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, but half the time they look at me and say, that's stupid. And that's <laughs> <laughs> well, the first, the first thing they say to do is to be in a positive mood. And I think that's uh, probably about the best uh, advice in the uh, the entire article. Yeah, twenty to thirty years of research shows that being in a positive mood improves creativity. When you're in a somewhat negative mood, a little anxious, that actually improves analytical thought. Right. But, yeah, uh, I think it's important. I, you know, when I'm when I'm not feeling the greatest, I don't really have giant ideas. I just want to get through the day. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and, but the things you can do to enhance your, uh, your um, positive mood, like um, exercise and lots of sleep, and we're going to be kind of talking about some of those things, uh, you can um, move on to, um, you know, where you are. And I know this has a tremendous effect on me on how, how creative I can think many times. Um, I'm right now sitting in the uh, back bedroom of our house and it's we call it my office and this is the least creative space in the entire house for me and lots of times i have my computer on a cart a little laptop cart and i'll take it to a different part of the house or a uh, or take it outside or something uh, to uh, change my uh, my view and also to change how i think about things there you go interesting here they said that if you have a deadline 
uh, which has the implicit threat of a negative consequence, can create anxiety and shift your cognitive strategy into a more analytical mode of thought. Hmm. So deadlines are not good. Well, uh, if you need insight or, you know, just a, a flash of it, if you depend on that, uh, deadlines might not be good. But, you know, lots of times you can puzzle your way at least through the project, uh, although you may not come out with the very best project. Yeah. Number two here actually goes into what you were just talking about, but large spaces. Um, perceptual attention, how you focus your vision, seems to be related to what's called conceptual attention. If you're in a cramped space, like your cubicle, your visual attention can't spread out. It's focused in a narrow space. Huh. You know, yesterday, um, uh, She Who Must Be Obeyed had a, uh, a uh, kind of a luncheon. And so I left the house and uh, packed up all my gear and went down to the uh, public library. And uh, we have a wonderful main library here. And uh, I sat for about two hours. Uh, reading and writing and, and doing things, and it was um, it was beautiful. It was expansive, but more importantly, it was different. And that, for me, has always been the uh, the uh, catalyst for doing something really creative. I find when we're traveling, I uh, tend to be much more creative. You're stimulated by what you see, what you're um, experiencing, just the fact that there's change in your life. Yeah, I got a lot of ideas in the car. Yeah, yeah. Uh, number three. Now, number three, I don't quite understand. Um, I don't understand either. Avoid sharp objects. We found that if you have striking objects, ones with sharp edges, pointy features like a sofa with angular sides or a letter opener that looks like a dagger, it can cause a subtle unconscious feeling of threat. When that happens, the tension narrows. So the ideal environment for being insightful would be large, airy spaces with soft, rounded features. No idea. Yep. I, have, I have no idea where they came up with that. Nope. Okay, number four. The, <laughs> the colors of nature. The color red, we think of it as an emergency color associated with blood, fire engines, stop signs. Grabs the attention and narrows it. But the outdoor colors, like the blue of the sky, the green of the trees, has been associated with relaxation, expansion, which creates a feeling of safety, which helps the attention expand and increases creativity. Yeah, which is the reason I like to uh, move into the sunroom and... Uh, Look out the back door at the big expanses of the garden and the green with the um, the blue sky above. I, that's probably my favorite uh, place to be. You could have enjoyed a beautiful view of an artificial lake if you didn't fill in your swimming pool, you know? Well, well yeah, but, you know, and when, when we had the boat, uh, I'd do a lot of riding up there. Uh, just uh, go sit on the boat and uh, and puzzle things through. You're such, such a deep thought guy here, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> hardly, hardly. <laughs> All right, number five is take a break. When you take a break from a problem that you're stuck on and do something completely different, you forget the bad idea that you are fixated on. It allows other ideas, better ideas, to bubble to the surface. If you're working on a problem and failing to solve it, when you take a break, your brain becomes more sensitized to anything in the environment related to the problem. So you notice more, you make an association, which then pops into your awareness as a sudden insight. Yeah. And, you know, lots of times the, uh, the best thing to do is to uh, just walk away and forget it completely. Yeah, you can't do that when your car is broke. So. <laughs> well, yeah, but, you know, lots of times, though, um, you know, we have a, a, a door hanging, a, a, a closet door hanging project going to be doing to, tomorrow. And um, it's kind of tricky. I, I can't explain it. I could show you better, but... Uh, yeah, we looked at it a couple of times and we're thinking, well, this isn't going to work that way. And we, and so you have to go to the um, hardware store, the blue, blue store in our case, and just wander the aisles looking for pieces that will uh, work f for the purpose that they're not intended for, but you can yeah. repurpose them. That's a great brainstorming way is to go to the big store. Oh, you know, most of it's important to know um, what's available. Um you know, that, that, that really, um, helps. Uh, one of the things that, uh, one of my favorite sayings is from uh, Louis Pasteur who said that, uh, fortune favors the prepared mind. And so, um, you know, that's the reason I read a lot. And, uh, but I also walk the aisles of the hardware stores and, uh, look at things and hold them and pick them up and think about how could I repurpose this if I ever had to. This is like deep thought Rick show. <laughs> 
I just read the article and then you riff on it. <laughs> All right, number six is something Rick and I both agree on, sleep. Oh. One of the most powerful tools for promoting insight is sleep. If you're stuck, take a nap, go to bed, you'll more thoroughly purge the bad idea you're stuck on and you'll be more attuned to clues that might solve the problems. Yeah. Have you ever taken a Myers-Briggs test? Yes, I have. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember the outlook. I, I, I am INTP and uh, very heavily uh, on the uh, introspective and um, introverted side. And um, one of the things that I, I just get really overloaded with people and whatnot and uh, even events and a nap in the middle of the day helps me reset uh, my tolerance for for dealing with things and so even just a 10 or 15 minute nap uh, helps but getting sufficient sleep uh, I love going to bed early and then getting up early I was up by five this morning and um, you know out walking the dogs and uh, and rambling around a little bit it says here that memory consolidation happens during sleep and memory consolidation transforms the memory. It brings out details, hidden relationships. That can be the stuff of creativity and insight. Have you Pub- ever, do you, hmm? do you trust that? Have you, that happens to you a lot, doesn't it? Oh, I get ideas when I wake up. Yeah. Or- yeah. Yeah. You go to sleep, you think about it. Uh, you try to think about it just before you go to sleep and then you, um, uh, you wake up and you go, oh, of course, I know exactly what to do. Paul McCartney was awakened one morning with this melody in his head. It was the song Yesterday. It just appeared to him. Sleep supercharges creativity. Mm-hmm. And uh, lack of sleep, it was just run you down. Uh, yep. And particularly me. I, I got to have enough sleep. Number seven, do nothing. Doing nothing is creative work because when you're consciously doing nothing, the conscious part is only a tiny part of what your brain is. The rest of it, the unconscious, is chugging away all the time. There's this process cognitive psychologists call incubation, the brain churning over associations. And these associations can pop pop into awareness as insight. The incubation process is supercharged during sleep. Also, when doing nothing, letting your mind wander and having no particular task to to perform this incubation process also happens yeah yeah and see that's um one of the reasons that um i'll get out and garden when i'm stuck uh just something you know just hoeing around a little bit pulling some weeds uh, doing nothing really uh but you know when not reading not listening to a podcast although you should always listen to garden fork radio yes uh while you're gardening but um just trying to um you know, clear your mind and, and let the associations flow and, uh, and have something to do with your hands. They'll keep you out of trouble. Chopping. Uh, I do a lot of vegetable chopping and, uh, and thinking. And uh, that's kind of my time to really, uh, uh, when, before uh, dinner. Uh, in fact, tonight we're going to have another stir fry. This has been stir fry week. Uh, my vegetables have just come in gang bang, uh, gangbusters this year. And it has been uh, an amazing thing. So and we're, so they're very enlightened dinner. Yeah. So we're having an enlightened dinner. You know, um, we'll talk about this in an upcoming episode. But um, trying to clear your mind can, for me is an incredibly difficult thing. I call it the hamster wheel. That there is this part of my brain. The Buddhists call it monkey brain. Monkey brain. You bet. Um, but we'll talk about this in a future episode coming up soon. Number eight, which is an excellent one, except if you live in the West Coast. Take a shower. Take a shower? Yeah. The shower is a great place to let your mind wander, to incubate thoughts, and to set the stage for insight. In the shower, the water is warm. You don't feel a boundary between your skin and the outside of your body. You feel sort of expansive. There's white noise in the background. What you see is kind of blurry. So you turn your thoughts inward, like sensory deprivation. It allows your mind to wander and your attention to broaden. That's why people tend to have great ideas in the shower. I never knew why, but that makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. You know, one of my favorite uh, apps is a, um, it's just a white noise app that essentially plays a, a babbling brook or stream or something over and over and over to uh, kind of block out the, the, uh, the craziness of, uh, of life. Yeah, I actually, um, I do like the white noise as well. Sometimes I have the TV on low just as kind of a white noise thing as well. Mm, yeah, I, I can't watch, have TV on anywhere. I'm, I'm one of those people that, um, 
if they you know we go to a restaurant i have to sit with my back to the tv i cannot watch tv uh you know i i just get captured i can't carry on conversation tv in the room i'm, I'm like you know, they, Tim, i'm uh, like temple grandin like that on inst- i think it's on instructables they have several um how to's about making your own uh remote control that will turn off almost any tv Oh, really? And you can go in the restaurant and turn the TVs off with your... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but somebody always turn them back on, you know? The, uh, the Mexican taco place right around the corner from our house is, uh, has two large TV. It's a, you know, it's kind of a narrow, long... Uh, it's a storefront. It's a, it's a Brooklyn storefront, so it's kind of narrow and deep. And they have TV, big TVs on the front wall and the back wall, so you really can't avoid them. And they play telenovelas, which are uh, Mexican soap operas, right. all day and all night. And you get sucked into them because you can't, I can't understand them, but there's always some drama going on. But you can tell what's going on, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, there's always something between uh, two people and some, some conflict there. <laughs> well, you know, that um, that's number eight. That's the end of this list. There's one that I like to add, though, huh. that, that really works for me, is to have something else with a deadline that you don't want to do. When I'm avoiding something, I can find all kinds of creative things to do that just pop into my head. Uh, I've, I've been a procrastinator like that forever. Uh, and uh, the other thing is to um, uh, constraints are actually your friend. Um, a blank sheet of paper or, uh, you know, a, you know, no constraints at all it, are actually the um, kind of the uh, the enemy in many ways. Huh. Interesting. At least for me, it is. Well, um, if you guys have some insights on uh, creative thinking, how to foster this kind of thing, um, radio at GardenFork.tv is the way to get hold of us. Or on Twitter. We're on, I am uh, GardenForkTV on Twitter. And Rick, you are uh, on Twitter. I'm R H Kennerly. There you go, K E N N E R L Y R H Kennerly. Cool. Yeah. Uh, well, you said we have some viewer mail. We have. A, I wanted to read a customer uh, review on our Garden Fork Radio show. I know who it is because they wrote who it is here. Um, it's from Eric of. Root, I'm presuming it's from Eric of Root Simple. It says Root Simple here. Uh, great DIY information. Five stars. Eric presents a lot of inform- useful information, has a great sense of humor. He covers lots of subjects from cooking to making your own boat to beekeeping. I listen to every episode, plus cute dogs. Oh, wow. Well. So there you go. Well, thank you. Thank you, Eric. Uh, Eric and I have been, uh, he has, Root Simple has a call in phone number where you can leave comments. And so they talked about toilets. So then I called into their show and left a very long message about toilets, which they played. And then. Uh, on recent Eric Solo show here, of course, you all heard me talk even more about toilets. And then, of course, they talked about toilets again on Root Simple. So it, I think we're going to have to stop talking about toilets now. Uh, you know, so. toilets are a universal problem for most people. We don't talk about them much, but everybody has problem with them. Yeah. Well, I just bought the uh, toilet snake. The, the, basically, it's a, it's a regular snake, but it's in a long tube with like a right angle on the end and that will help with clogs you know so. and you you know you said you were getting kind of you know tired of talking about toilets and stuff but i said it last time i heard you guys talking about toilets and i did not know that device even existed after all the walking of the the aisles and everything at the store and i uh, i haven't got, got gotten one yet but i'm going to go get one because uh, it's it's ideal to, to keep around, and I really uh, we need one on a uh, fairly frequent occasion. We have some root problems around here. Um, They're all at fifteen bucks. Yeah. So yeah. So okay. I uh, I'm, I need one, but so I didn't know even know it existed. So I appreciate it. There you go. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> all right, everyone. If you have any questions for us, it's radio at gardenfork.tv. If you'd like to write a review on our iTunes page, that would be great. Just type in Garden Fork Radio on the iTunes uh, store. You have to use, you have to go from your laptop or your desktop computer. I don't, I don't think you can do it from a smartphone. I don't think so. Uh, coming up, we're going to talking about turning your iPhone into a full-fledged HD video camera that you can shoot a feature film with. Really? Very cool. Wow. Very cool. Look up a movie called Tangerine. In the uh-huh. New York Times, there's a very cool article about how they used iPhones to shoot this uh, indie feature. And um, 
really cool stuff that we're actually going to be implementing some of this in Garden Fork. Wow. Okay. Well, I look forward to that. Cool. So thanks, everyone. Thank you, Rick. Okay. My pleasure, my friend. All right. Make it a great day, everyone. We'll see you later. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Garden Fork's theme music is used under license from uniquetracks.com. Thank you.